I'd like to move to uh, the question and answer session for the, the uh, two presentations that we have just finished. So let me share with uh, the question from Almin that, it, that goes to Ham. Um, so, so Alvin thanks Ham for the informative presentation and, and he asks that you had mentioned that the free parking policy should be temporary initiative. Can you kindly share how cities in the Netherlands are dealing with the transition to are taking away the free parking incentives for the EV owners? Do you have advice in terms of a range of ideal durations for keeping such an incentive? Huh? Yeah, yes, I will, uh, I will answer that. I also answered that already to Elvin uh, in, the, uh, in the email. Um, the, the, uh, the ideal uh, duration uh, is very, uh, very uh, individual uh, on, the city, uh, on the city level uh, to be defined. Um, for example, if you look at the city in Norway, where they started already in 2009, 2010, with their AV policy, they had a long time where they could offer free charging, free parking, so free electricity, uh, even for the charging. Uh, for a long time, it was possible. Up to, uh, until you got a certain uptake that went very quick, and then suddenly they had to uh, to uh, uh, to stop because then the pressure became too high. So uh, then they said, okay, now you have to start paying for your charging. Uh, the, what's logical, but the, the, as a st stimulation incentive, they did that in the begin in the early years, and they also had to say, no, you cannot charge everywhere for free uh, because they had they had gradual steps. For example, you could um, uh, as an EV even park for free at non-charging uh, locations, just to give uh, EV uh, drivers really an advantage to say, okay, it's more difficult for you, your range is less, it's more complicated, but we have something for you. You can park everywhere in the city. So this could last quite a long time. In Amsterdam, where we where it started later, this time frame was shorter, so several of years before it was not possible anymore to give to, to have charging for free or what I said in the you could you could even apply for a charge in front of your home so that you had a dedicated parking spot in Amsterdam in the early days uh, you can only do this for a very short time because then it starts to explode um, the, in the electric mobility is, is is speeding up the uptake is speeding up all over the world uh, also Kathmandu uh, so the, the you have to look at what kind of incentives do you really need and how long can you really uh, uh, keep them in uh, in uh, in place? Uh, so there is no one uh, um, uh, there's no one solution for this, uh, Alvin. You have to look at the local situation, uh, and, and in many cases you would not even like to start anymore with free parking space. But maybe in a smaller city, say okay, we don't have so much pressure. We do that here. We can start with it. So it's really depending on the case by case uh, situation. But the ballpark figure, uh, you're not talking about 10 years anymore. You're more talking about one, two, three, maybe five years. This, I hope this answers the, the question. But uh, most important is look at the complete uh, set of incentives that you can provide and look what is works best in your city and what does not annoy others too much because you don't want to, to create um, uh, a divide in society where half of the society who can or more who cannot afford, uh, afford electric vehicles is getting more and more against electric mobility because others get too many advantages and they are taking away for example their parking space because then the uptake will take even lower because people get negative attitude uh, attitudes towards ev so it's a it's a fine balance uh, Alvin. thank thank you very much Ham. so i have another question to you so uh, in case of Nepal, uh, is, uh, you also might have heard, uh, also heard from the previous presentation, there is need of a coordination, coordination mechanism or dedicated institution like highlighted by Sagar Gyawali. Uh, here in Nepal, is, we don't have any dedicated institutional and coordination mechanism to coordinate not only for the charging infrastructure, but for, for overall EVs uh, uh, development, uh, EV electric vehicle sector development. So um, by linking, linking with some, um, Examples or cases from other countries. Do you have any suggestions for Nepal, or um, uh, uh, like for coordination me me mechanism for establishing uh, a dedicated institutional mechanism like that? Uh, 
if you, you can share any cases from other countries, that might help. Thank you. So, so the question is, there is no uh, national coherent uh, policy uh, in the system. Uh, and, and you ask for what kind of uh, examples there are from other regions, uh, uh, how you could establish this or how you could uh, uh, come to, despite this policy, to uh, the EV uh, uptake. Is that correct? Is that yeah. more or less? Yeah. 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 It, so first is uh, from, from the, the talks with, uh, with, with Ritu and with uh, Busan. And it's cl indeed clear that this is a topic for cities to, uh, to, uh, to struggle uh, with. Um, first, let's let's assume that there's no country policy that's very uh, helpful that, uh, that that's that's happening in more countries then the city level can via its concessions do a lot so what we see uh, of course a city can also when there is not enough budget and uh, 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 spending possibilities you can also do incentives in the form of uh, of subsidies uh, of evs and uh, but normally this is this is more difficult for cities. So normally the uh, solutions are more on things that you can actually influence locally, and that is uh, uh, parking, charging locations, preferences like uh, closing down some zones in the city for other vehicles. Uh, uh, solution in, in the Netherlands in Rotterdam, where they where they want to speed up with with trucks, for example, electric trucks uh, and uses. And they said, what can we do? And they said, okay electric uh, the truck can outside the normal time window where people can go into this street or city or region in this city neighborhood they can go outside because they're more silent or they can do when they have to unload their vehicle they're allowed to to do a little bit of uh, of parking on the pedestrian areas as a just as a first appetizer, because you cannot do that for many years. You can only do that in the early time, early. So these are things that you can do. You can close down zones. Uh, you can say taxis are only allowed here when they are electric. So that's also a big driver. So you have to look at what kind of things can I do to circumvent that there's not a national policy. And really uh, money is one thing, so national uh, money on incentives, but the most important driver are these uh, these uh, these uh, privile privileges for EV drivers? Uh, also, going into the city, if you have a a, 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 a drive lane only for electric, uh, you are quicker at work or at home or whatever. That's important, but it's much more important that you can say, "Hey, I'm being seen as being clean and not a spoiling environment, so I I'm allowed to drive on this special." Privileged uh, and uh, the drive lane, the outside, the the, the, the road. Uh, what is it? Yes, and the lane in the uh, outside the city. Uh, I can go on the bus lane, so that where the only the public uh, only public transport is. These are most more important than money uh, in the early time, early days. National policy. Uh, yeah, uh, we have done really a lot with uh, the, uh, the with the European Commission, with the countries on policies on what works and what kind of in incentives are really effective. Um, how can you stimulate the consumer market or the business market? Can you steer its, uh, funding towards certain uh, the vehicle type categories? So uh, maybe you as a country, you don't feel very uh, comfortable by incentivizing a large vehicles like Tesla Model S or whatever. We you know I want to incentivize the, the smaller vehicles or for example, even I want to incentivize the really A-segment a vehicles or even the light electric vehicles, the scooters. So there's a lot of the, uh, and the buttons where you can turn uh, to, uh, to, to reach those uh, areas. Um, yeah, uh, happy to go to to go more in detail about that, but I think it's too much to go to uh, into all the different uh, different uh, yeah. Yeah. EV stimulation policies. But the effectiveness beforehand, just one example: the Netherlands started with a with a business oriented uh, incentive policy or companies, and they targeted both plug-in hybrids and uh, full electric. Uh, let's say back in 2011 till. 2014 or something. And the consequence was, uh, was that there were a lot of plug-in hybrids uh, being bought by companies for their drivers, their employees, so the people with the company car. Uh, and those cars were never charged because there was no incentive. So the incentive in the early days targeted the wrong group. 
uh, this was quickly corrected and uh, it's, it's now not no longer in, in, in place. So that's fine. You have to learn and you have to stumble and you find new ways. Uh, but be thinking ahead of what do you want to target and reach is very important. Thank you very much, uh, Han, uh, for your uh, uh, answer for this, my question. And uh, uh, as you informed, uh, you have uh, another meeting uh, uh, very soon. So uh, uh, on behalf of Solution Plus team, I would like to thank you for your time and for the presentation that uh, you delivered in the program. Thank you very much. It was really nice to have you uh, on board for this uh, training session. Uh, thank you very much, Ham. So now, uh, now I will. Uh, uh, thank, thank you uh, also for uh, for having me in the uh, in the uh, in the training. And uh, so I will switch off because then I will go to the other uh, activ the other activities. That's fine. So I don't need to stay. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Since you have another meeting, you may leave yes. now. Uh, Ham, thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. So now uh, uh, I'll uh, move uh, to another question to another speaker. Sagar, sir, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, since there are a um, couple of questions to you, but uh, we are quite running out of time. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll start from question from Gaurav uh, Raj Pandey, sir. Uh, so there is a question. By when you are planning to deploy the charging station, you uh, can you elaborate uh, on the question from Gaurav Raj Pandey? Uh, Excuse me, sir. By when? Yeah, yeah. Since um, NEA has already established uh, 50 charging yes, stations. No, no, no. Under, we we, no we have not uh, established. It's under construction. Uh, okay. It's under construction, and the STLT oh. line is uh, being uh, been started to construct, and then the charger and the transformer they are and under manufacturing. So we'll I think we will complete this project within six to eight months. Uh, if any uh, disturbance or interference will not will not be there. Uh, this is the 50 charging station regarding other the private charging stations we are promoting and we have each already started and many uh, number of chargers already has uh, installed like uh, i think uh, there is a presentation from digo group they have also installed the charger in the same basis uh, in uh, sinduli and Purinda. and number of uh, the chargers they have uh, installed in biratnagar and Bitamar also so we are promoting this and we are taking the application for this and you can uh, take the application from website and uh, you can put the application. So uh, it's, it's a it's ongoing process. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Another question, uh, uh, what is the provision to standardize the charging stations where anyone can go and charge? It's you mentioned in your PPT. Uh, no, there is not any provision. You can just go and the uh, yes, the the uh, charging is the charger should have the open charging point protocol. Uh, that that should be there. And any private uh, uh, charging station, they have this provision, and it have to be communicated with the server system. So there is no other anything, and you have to download the, that app, and then you you should have the QR code, or you have to purchase the RFID card from him. Okay. You, have, you have to put money on that RFID card, and this is the port, postpaid system in RFID, and it's a prepaid in the QR code system. Okay, and uh, yeah, it, so, it does so, not mean so, so let me take one more question uh, from Sam Sundar Sapkota, sir, uh, who is uh, representing Bagmati Province Government, uh, the Transport Operation and Management um, uh, Office. So his question is, is NEA an authorized government agency to centralize charger, or NEA will play is a, one of the organization in the electric vehicle ecosystem. If any is separately planning to establish charging station in different location, why it was not coordinated with provincial government? Why I am saying is like you said, you will have charging station at Paris Bus Park, but for the same location, PTOMB has already made agreement with Bharatpur Metropolitan City to establish charging station. So I think, uh, there is kind of oh, coordination. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we uh, I think uh, the in the TV, I think he is representing, very easy representing, I'm seeing some rude question here. Yeah. So <clears throat> we have uh, made that agreement before they have done uh, in the Paras was far. So it is not like that we are not coordinating or something like that. We are only putting the own charging station there, there will be the three gone, and then provisional government also can put their charger there. Or I think they are processing some uh, buses there, and they may have planning for that. So it is not a thing that the single charging station will provide all of the solution or something like that. 
So we have uh, made the agreement with the Bharatpur municipality one year before. So it is not part that we are taking a Chomon or something like that. At the starting, what happened? Uh, there was the hindrance that who will uh, make the charging stations, and uh, the Nepal government uh, has given that tax to us, and it is not that Sagar Gyanwali wanted to put charging station, and he took the project. And it is not the case. It is the case that Nepal government chose the NEA. Uh, NEA has given this work to the our department. We are doing that. So it is not the individual work. It's the government work. So you have to ask this question to. Uh, that the municipality, Bharat municipality, either or the Nepal government, inner ministry, you can directly ask. Okay, thank you very much, Sagar sir. Yeah, in, during the the first session of this training, just uh, today, today before, um, just two days before today, um, there were representatives from provincial government, representatives from local government, and representatives from the federal government. And what uh, we agreed is that there is lack of coordination. Um, in from the aspect of overall ecosystem, not only the charging infrastructure or vehicle conversion like that, overall coordination. So um, it seems like them. Um, um, although you were not there in the in the first session, it seems like we need to strengthen the coordination, establish a coordination mechanism like that. Uh, it seems um, uh, like that. So, uh, uh, um, yeah, that is my opinion. And uh, just uh, since we are running already out of time uh, by around 10 minutes, um, we need to, to uh, take, we, we need to continue. However, uh, one last question to Sagar, sir. Uh, is there any st standard or guideline uh, that is being formulated by the ENEA uh, regarding the establishment and operation of the charging stations sir, in the new, near future? Yes, or? yes sir. Uh, yeah, we are working on that model. And this is, this is the very uh, first solution. It is not the final solution. We are, we are seeing the vehicles in the market and we are we we, we talk with we sit with the venture manufacturer or the importer, and based on that we have designed the best solution for that. And we have for this we, we talk with some our consultants also. So we think that the preliminary this solution will be work, and this is not the final. And later, uh, uh, beside that, fifty chargers definitely uh, there should be number of uh, more number of chargers, and uh, for that we will we'll, we'll, we'll make uh, some more studies. And government may think differently, or uh, they may provide that uh, tax to NEA or not. So uh, uh, I can tell what happening for the two projects. One is for the 50 charges, and another for the that means the 500 charges for the private owners. And for this, I can say for the other government planning, I cannot say. Okay. Thank you very much for your answers. And